Hey, welcome to Weld.com. Got a run here we're going to do on some beveled plate with a backing plate. I've had several requests for people to, to show the backing plate with the quarter inch opening. I didn't do anything after I beveled these. I flame cut them and I just cleaned them with the wire wheel front and back. I cleaned the mill scale off of a piece of uh, quarter by one and a half, tacked it on the back side. No root face at all. Don't run a root face when you're doing a backing plate. Quarter inch gap. And I'm going to be running an ESOB 7100 dual shield wire. This is the wire that produces the flux. I've run this wire a lot and I love it. Uh, large fillet welds in weird positions, grooves, OLETs. Um, you guys that have run OLETs on big pipe and stuff, that's a lot of fill. I ain't get it done pretty quick on this wire here. Stuff pours in like butter. Doesn't really show any drag lines on it or anything, and it's kind of weird because it's covered in flux. You can see the edges of the weld. You can't really see the definition of the weld pool where it's, where it's freezing. So it's a little bit of a trust thing to get to run it. I'm going to run this. Uh, I have 035 on today. I'm running off the Rebel 235, and I'm going to run 26 volts, 470 on the wire feed speed. And I'm going to run out probably a, a good 5 eighths to 3 quarter electrical stick out. I want to increase that resistance. Now one thing I will say about this wire, in my experience, it is prone to a condition called wormhole porosity. <clears throat> kind of a strange term, but um, we used to use this a lot in prefab piping rollout. We'd run a hard wire route and a fill pass with 045 and a cap three passes and I mean smoking hot and you'd be running long and it looks like everything is just super cool and you're proud of your work and the weld you make a you make an eight inch weld in 12 minutes or less drink coffee in between passes I mean it's pretty quick and you get done and you knock the slag off there and you got these little bitty weird looking marks in the very face of your cap or your weld and you're going golly what is that it's annoying they're not very deep at all and it's called, it's called wormhole porosity. It's, you can do an, an, a value change, you can increase a volt. I've gotten rid of it a lot of times by the electrical stick out, so that's what I'm gonna try today and hopefully it'll work. I don't, I don't wanna leave it behind if it happens, cool. Uh, the times that it has been left behind on some of our piping work, uh, we go in with a light grinder sander and just touch them again they're not very deep but i've ground into them a little bit and bead brushed them we x-ray the welds it hadn't been a problem the inspectors had looked at it and they said yeah hey, we know what it is and it's fine it's it's really really it's you know a 30 second of an inch deep now if it gets porosity and stuff grind that out for sure so anyway I'm gonna get a hood on. A little uh, shout out to Plymouth Vent. They're gonna keep all the smoke away from me. This is a fairly smoky process. And uh, Steiner gloves. I'm gonna I'm gonna try out some new Mega Mig gloves here. So let me get my stuff on. I'll be right back. I'm uh, I'm keeping the wire on the leading edge. And weaving back and forth so I can consume the feathered edge and the backing plate. I'm not going to beat that up. 
gonna let it cool off a little bit. It should come off fairly easy though. That wormhole porosity condition I was talking about is right there and right there. I hope that's the last time I see that on this run. I'm not alarmed with it in that, in that first pass. I plan on filling this up and consuming it and I hope this condition gets better. If I need to make a value change, I'm going up in volts and wire feed speed. I noticed that was kind of popping and shaking at the end of the wire. I like to run this stuff where it's just a smooth sizzle. And this roll of wire has been out in the shop on a machine for a, a couple of months now. The students were running it toward the end on some procedures. They did a lot of horizontal plate and they did some piping runs with it. So it's probably absorbed some moisture, my bad. Anyway, I'm gonna let this cool for just a second. We're gonna come back and run a fill pass. Uh, this second pass, I went ahead and did a, a value change. I went up to 26.5 and 480 on my wire feed speed. And I'm trying to weave this in and leave myself enough room for a, uh, just a gentle cap when I go running my normal weave here. That camera guy, what's the amperage? 150. What? 150. That's not high enough. Did a run here a minute ago and uh, had a little wormhole porosity. Wasn't really confident with what was getting ready to happen here, so I uh, looked over at the bottle of gas and it was way down at the very bottom of my C25 that I'm running. So I went ahead and changed the bottle of gas to a new bottle. Um, I bumped myself up five cubic feet per hour to 30 and I made a value change of 25.5. I went down in voltage, but I left the wire where it was. So we're, uh, we're looking a little better here, so. Rock and roll, he said.
one big old chunk of slag, one another one in there. Yeah, there we go. Pretty quick run, really. I mean, I realize it took a little bit for the camera stuff because we're adjusting, but if I was doing this in, a, in production on piping and stuff, you can get in and get concentrated. And I mean, you gotta watch your overall heat input again, but when you're pulling the trigger, it's, it's laying some material down pretty quick. So anyway, uh, pretty impressive stuff. I've used it a lot, a long time ago, and I, I teach with it. I teach a lot of different flux core wires, but again, um, ahead of your response, can you do the backing, backing strip and the uh, flux core? So you know, we do a lot of this on uh, half, three quarter inch plate with 045 wire and bigger, and we run multiple stringer beads. We, we, we do it a lot of different positions and everything. So, hey, I hope this helps and answers the viewer uh, questions and stuff. Thanks for watching Weld.com. Please subscribe to the videos. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, I had a cog come to me today. You ain't gonna believe this. He's like, does it get hot in here in the weld shop? And I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> and he goes, when you're welding and it gets hot, does sweat drip down in your hood? And I'm thinking to myself, man, this guy's good. <laughs> Yeah, finally, I'm waiting on you. Thought I was. Well, you are now, hold on. Oh, God. Won't you wake me up when you're ready? No, no. Pour some butter, run like butter. Come on, darling, run in there good for me, will you please? Cameraman's over here mouthing off to me like I gotta do something special here. And, uh, boy, I hope this runs good, camera guy. You gonna be in focus? You gonna be all right? I wonder what that slag tastes like. Is that any good? I better not do that. I might burn my lips.